All right, I want to review this video and show you why gun confiscation will never work in America. Never going to happen. Um, so see what I'm saying as we go through this video here. Um, I'm going to play a couple of things here and then I'll explain and you'll see what I'm saying. He just hit. He just hit. He just hit. Hold on. I haven't heard a bang yet. Fire extinguisher. Heads up here. Heads up here. And step it up. Okay. Let me just stop. If you get down to this description thing here, it says a family a family member reported that 32-year-old Jonathan Gunaris had threatened them and himself. The situation quickly escalated, prompting the deployment of the SWAT team and hostage negotiators at 9.18 a.m. Despite repeated attempts to communicate with Gunaris, there, were, there was no response from within the house. By 11.51 a.m., authorities made the decision to enter the home. Immediately upon entering the house, the deputies received fire. Officers returned fire, incapacitating Gunaris. The suspect was heavily found heavily armed with multiple firearms, a fixed blade knife, pepper spray and ballistic armor. During the exchange, several law enforcement personnel were injured. Um, and that goes into the injuries down there and things would all happen. Um, now, it doesn't give all the details, but um, my issue would be if he's, it says right here, a family member reported the 32-year-old Jonathan Gunaris had threatened them and himself. Okay, are the family members still in this place? They don't say. And they come over and Obviously, they're trying to negotiate with them and things, um, but they don't identify themselves when they're coming in, which I always thought police would yell, you know, police or something, identify themselves. Um, so that's kind of an issue, but watch what they do. They don't say anything about police, get down, get, you know, get your hands in the air or whatever. There's no verbal commands. They just go smash the door in, go in and the shooting begins. Let's continue. Okay, notice what this officer is doing. He's running. First, he has his back like this. He's running away with his back, and then he starts to fire back into the house. Are there any officers in there? Are there any family members in there? They're just shooting it randomly at the house. And I realize it's a very high stress situation. And, you know, before I go even further, any further, let me just say, I'm not against police. Okay, there's a lot of people that say we should get rid of the police and defund the police. And I'm not into that whole movement. Um, I defend law enforcement. Okay, again, it's a biblical system. Romans chapter 13 talks about that they are the ministers of God to thee for good. They're supposed to have the sword of, of vengeance that they or revenge those who don't follow the laws, uh, you know, biblically, biblically ordained laws. Um, you know, this guy's threatening people and whatever else, this Gunaris guy or whatever, and they go in, they, they get shot at by him, and they just start pumping rounds into the house. How are you, you know, what are you shooting at here? How do you know if there's an officer inside? Uh, you know, continue. Shots fired! Shots fired! Shots fired! Shots fired! Okay, this guy here is yelling, I'm hit, I'm hit, and this guy right here was just shooting over top of him. How do you know that he didn't just shoot him? Ted's hit! Ted's hit! Justin, Justin, I got you! Justin, I got you! I got you! Go get him! Get him, get him, get him! Pull, pull, pull! Pull, pull, pull! It's my arm, my left arm! Sam, Sam, back! Back! Get up, get up! I can't pull my gun! Jesus, he's inside? Uh, and he uses the Lord's name in vain. That's always going to help you as a police officer. You know, police officers used to have, actually have moral character, where they wouldn't use all kinds of profanity. They weren't tattooed up like crazy. Now they're just, they're just filthy and vile and using the F word all the time and things. It's disgusting. But, again, um, he could have gotten up and, and got out of there. 
But hey, until things are, until you make sure that the situation is taken care of, stay put. You know, they're doing a whole lot of things wrong here. I'm not a, I'm not an expert by any means, whatever, but, you know, give me your thoughts in the comments section. This just does not look very professional to me. I mean, look and see where the guy's at. I mean, what, just go up to the side door, start ramming it, you know, bang, bang. You're giving the guy time to, you know, get ready to fire. So, okay, here comes a police officer out. I guess he was the one that must have shot the guy or something, but he was inside. And this officer that has the, the badge cam or whatever, he was shooting into the house, just <laughs> multiple rounds into the house. This guy was in there. I'm assuming, I mean, unless he, you know, there was nobody inside when this officer was shooting and then this guy came in and went in there. It's just such a mess. Got him down. Get down. Get down. Get down. Are we going in? I need another one. Okay. Then he goes over here, and there's this one police officer. I'm not going to bother showing it right there. You can kind of see it. But he shot in the face. Took a bullet right to the face. And they're trying to bandage the guy up and, you know, get him back to being all right and whatever. And, and um, then he comes over here. We'll just skip to this part. Come into the house. Blue, come into the house. We need a medic. You're inside? Yes. We need a medic. We're inside. We're inside the house. Look at the bullet holes. Bullet holes here on the side of the house. We need a medic. How do you know it wasn't some of the police officers that were out here just firing rounds, pumping rounds into the house? So, you know, and then it, it ends pretty much right there. But, um, like I said, not at all against police officers. Every officer I've ever talked to up here in Northern Maine, they're all cool guys. I was talking to a sergeant um, just the other day, literally at a gun shop, and we, were, we had a great conversation. Was a really neat guy, a local guy, um, telling me about a lot of the airplane crashes when Loring Air Force uh, Base used to be active. They crash in airplanes all the time up in this area. And really nice guy, you know, uh, wasn't saying, oh, Lord, what are you doing in here? Why are you in the gun shop? What are you trying to get or something? No, really nice guy. Um, so I can't imagine that police are just going to say, and most police officers I've ever met have been very much pro-gun, so they're not going to just go out and try to confiscate guns. But the, my point I'm trying to make here, just looking at this thing, analyzing this thing, this is a very extremely high stress situation. You have at least two officers that were wounded here. One guy took a bullet in the face. He's done. He's finished. You, even if it's just a, a grazing wound or whatever else, I mean, the guy's blood everywhere. Um, but even if it was just a you know superficial type of a thing, that's going to leave some scars mentally. And it's just one guy that they went after. And the guy's prepared and things. If a order is ever given... We're going to, guns are now illegal in America. We're co coming around to confiscate them. Who's going to do the confiscation? You're going to send in militarized police or something or whatever. The trauma that's going to come as a result of that. I mean, it's, okay, guys, let's just say that this was about gun confiscation. It wasn't, but let's just say it was. They went in, they got, they got the bad guy, shot him. He's down, took a bullet to the stomach or something, according to the description. And... Okay, he's been neutralized. Take all of his guns, put them in the, the truck. Okay, who's able to go to the next door? No. You know, it's not going to work. I mean, this is the kind of thing that these guys are going to have to go through all kinds of, you know, mental rehabilitation and things to get back to, you know, not thinking about this. I mean, it's just, you can see how bad it went very quickly. And again, you know, I think I heard the, the term the one time about going through a door like that. A bunch of officers and they try to get through a little single door and they I think they called it the death funnel you know correct me if I'm wrong put it in the comments down below but you know you get all these officers are out there you have all this gear on it's really heavy gear all these ballistic vests and things and those things weigh a lot and you know all this stuff and you're going in there you don't know what you're facing it's terrible it's a terrible thing 
So the reason I did this video is because I believe in the right of self-defense. Jesus tells his disciples in Luke chapter 22. Let me show you the scripture. <clears throat> There's nothing wrong with you having self-defense. Uh, you can be passive if you want to or whatever else, but um, you can also defend yourself. Luke chapter 22, verse 36. Then said he unto them, But now he that hath a purse, let him take it, and likewise his scrip. And he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. All right. And people try to make all kinds of commentary. Well, it was just so that he could fulfill the thing of cutting off the guy's ear, and that you know. And it was actually it wasn't a sword. It was a it was kind of a long knife for flaying fish or something. I think John MacArthur taught that. The guy's an idiot. But uh, no, it's talking about if you read the whole context. Jesus is saying, I'm going to be dying on the cross. I won't be here to protect you, you know, as God manifest in the flesh. And so you're, you're going to have some personal defense type of things that come up. There's nothing wrong with that. You have to defend yourself. Okay, Providing for your own is not just financial in 1 Timothy chapter 5. You also have to be able to provide safety. Right? I've had to provide safety a few times for my wife and my son. I'm the, the guy that has to go and fight the bad guys. And like I said, I've had to do that, and I will continue to do that. I am armed, and I am not ashamed to say that. Uh, I'm, I don't. Let's go take the country and you know turn it into a Christian dictatorship or something. Well, no, I don't really see that in Scripture as being something that would happen in the end times. But the whole point is, it's not offensive; it's defensive. And you know, I get it that this guy, this according to the description there the Jonathan Gunaris or whatever he was supposedly bad and things and threatening and whatever else and they tried to work stuff out and so then they sent in this SWAT team and but I you know, read read the comments on this video a lot of people are saying it wasn't really a real good SWAT team maneuver here they really didn't do that good of a job and you know uh, where was the guy at are you looking through the windows did you get some intel are the family members out there's a lot of things you know they can't Put all that into the video and into the description i get it but the logistics of trying to enter in somebody's home and you know basically disarm them which is ultimately what they try to do here uh, you can see how bad it went uh i mean okay an officer takes a bullet to the arm to the leg that's bad but he can go back to you know fighting and, and things um when it heals up officer takes one to the face uh, it's not going to go very well for that guy. That's pretty much career ending at that point in time. There's major damage there. So um, do not let the propaganda out there of they're going to eventually come and confiscate our guns. They can't. Okay. There's not enough of them. There's way too many armed Americans. And uh, there are things that a Christian can do in as far as carnally of uh, Obviously, prayer and, and things, that's important. But to just sit there and say, all I have to do is pray and read my Bible and I don't have to take any kind of physical action or whatever. Well, you feed yourself, don't you? You take a bath, I hope. Um, you know, there are some physical things that you need to do. Well, God will provide for me. I don't have to work. Well, yes, you do have to work. All right, do something. Labor. Do some kind of work. If you work for the Lord, okay. If you're working out in the secular world, great. Um... And this whole thing here, uh, you know, just I look at this and I just think, what a terrible mistake. Um, there's a, a different ways to handle this whole situation. And now you have an officer that's basically scarred for the rest of his life. What a shame. But these officers, hey, you ready to get down on the road to the next house and take their guns? So... But give me your thoughts on this. I'd like to hear some people what you're thinking about this. I know I, I have a lot of gun owners and even some Leos and things that, that watch the videos, military and whatever else. Let me know your thoughts on this whole thing. To me, it looked like a very botched situation, just terrible. I mean, the bullet holes, you know, there's one. This looks like an entry there. That's obviously an exit. So this one, I guess, went in. There's one through the window screen. There's bullet hole there and there on the side of the wall. I mean... Even if it was only the bad guy in the house, still, uh, 
just shooting through the walls. I mean, you could hit a fellow officer. Terrible. You know, and again, like I'm saying, there, there's one coming through the door. And when you do this, the bullet will keyhole. It will start to spin. You need a bullet to go. You know, they, they come out of the barrel. It's rifled in the barrel. And they spin so that they track straight. You hit something, any object, and it'll make the bullet go off course. And it'll start to go. And it loses its, its velocity and, and things. And it's not going to be effective when it hits the guy. But it can also go off target. So, again, bullet coming through here as the guy's opening it up. And one's coming through this way because the officer running that way is just bang, 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 just unload his magazine. So um, <laughs> just I saw this yesterday, just finishing up some stuff, and I saw it, I thought, huh, Andrew, I'm sorry, three SWAT team members. Okay, not just two. So, but let me know your thoughts in the comments section below, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.